In just the past few years, before even the age of 30, I have generated tens of millions of dollars online. I've gotten my pilot's license, I've bought a plane, I've flown that plane around the country, I've taken dozens of incredible trips a year with friends and family, I've met the girl of my dreams, and I've done all of that because of one simple formula that I figured out very early on. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ravi Abubala, I'm the founder of Scaling with Systems, where we've built over 1,000 end-to-end and marketing systems for coaches, agencies, and online service providers. And this video is a little bit different than some of my other videos. And let me be clear, this video is not me saying that I'm this unbelievably talented person and my life is great and I'm not trying to sell you to come work with me because I live this amazing life and maybe you don't live that great of a life. And I'm not making that assumption either. I'm just trying to tell you that this one formula is something that I wish I had known a little bit earlier on in my life and it would have brought me so much more happiness and I think I would have been able to achieve even more than I have today. And that is that the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your decisions. Now, stick with me because I know that that's not radical uh, because a lot of people have already talked about that. Everyone knows that your life is determined by your decisions, but what determines your decisions? And I've spent an unbelievable amount of time reflecting on this. I spend at least 30 minutes to an hour every single day journaling around some of these topics just so I can kind of become a better person myself. I'm a very introspective person myself. And what I've decided that if your life is determined by the quality of your decisions and the quality of your decisions is determined by the quantity of decisions you have to make on a daily basis. What I mean by that is that most people spend their entire day just making such trivial and small decisions over and over and over and over again, that by the time it comes to make the really big few decisions that we have to make in a month or a year or even a lifetime, we're so exhausted that we simply just procrastinate that decision to another day when we maybe find more energy, yet the next day we have the same decisions we have to make as the day before. People think that somehow as you maybe get more success or as you work harder or something on those lines that your decisions become less, but if anything, they become more. And so what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to systemize or eliminate the majority of your decision making so that you can focus on just those few decisions that will have an outsized return on your life. And I wanna give you a few of those specific specific examples for me in my own personal life. I'm going to start like kind of more on the personal side, and then I'm going to go over into the more business side of things. So my personal side, some of the ways I've been able to systemize and eliminate decision making so I can make better decisions and have a better life uh, is actually around my girlfriend. So in the intro, I was talking about how I found really what I consider to be the woman of my dreams. And the reason I was searching for a girlfriend in the first place, I uh, is kind of funny, it's going to be controversial, was actually because I didn't want to continue continue to spend so much energy uh, going out and talking to girls and going on dates uh, every single day. And so I was looking for somebody that I could kind of build almost like an empire with that would give me energy instead of being something that takes energy away from me. And, you know, in high school, in college, after college, for the first few years, uh, you know, I was the guy who was on Tinder, Hinge, Bumble, all the dating gaps you could imagine. I was going out four or five, six nights a week. You know, I was going on dates. And then when I started seeing success, I actually went on more dates, right? I would, I could go on more extravagant dates. I could get a higher quality of a woman. And so that just encouraged me to spend more time, energy and effort on that. And it wasn't until I started to be more reflective on exactly how I'm spending my time and my making my decisions and, and my energy that I realized how much energy uh, that was consuming. And I'm not saying that when you get a girlfriend or a boyfriend or something along those lines that you don't have to make any more decisions and that it doesn't require energy because any anything great is going to require an investment. But the point of it was that I could almost systemize a little bit more of our relationship, right? It wasn't like every single day I had to figure out what do I say to this person because I don't know who they are, what's going to make them happy or unhappy. Uh, I don't have to worry or, or figure out what they like and spend time, money and effort on that. Uh, you know, I don't have to go out on a dinner every single night just to impress them. It was like I, I was starting to realize that all this time, energy and effort that I was investing in, in these hundreds of different women, if I just invested in one woman, I could get this unbelievable outsized return where this person would know who I am at the most core fundamental level. And that's really where I'm at in my current relationship. I mean, I spend more time with her than anybody else in my life. I consider her my best friend. And I never would have had that if I just kept on jumping from woman to woman to woman to woman. And because that part of my life is, um, I don't want to say locked up because I don't want you to think that I'm this like complacent boyfriend, but I have it down systemized enough that I know what makes her happy and where we communicate on those things that I can take what used to be like 50% of my daily energy and I can focus it on the areas that I want to invest it in right now, which is like, for example, in my business. 
And this is a stark contrast to I have a few friends here in Miami, Florida, where, you know, there's no shortage of beautiful women here. I have a few friends that spend the majority of their time going on dates every single night. And what they tell me is that some of these dates, it's like sitting and uh, it's like talking to a wall, you know, you're sitting at this dinner. And so you're spending all week preparing for the dinner, getting excited, then you go to dinner, and then you just spend two to three hours. And they say some of them are is literally like talking to a wall. And I, I, I just couldn't even believe I, I, I don't know how they do it, honestly. And then the next night, they do the exact same thing. And the next night, they do the exact same thing. And so instead of doing this like thing over and over and over again, and making these decisions over and over again, I just decided to get one girlfriend and systemize my relationship around that. So we have a specific night out that we go out to eat just her and I every single week, my assistant books that dinner for us every single week and surprises it from a list of, of restaurants that we have, we have a specific night that we go out to with another couple uh, on Saturday night, and they have a specific list of restaurants. And then my executive assistant reaches out to those people and books them on the calendar. So it's both we're growing our relationship, we're growing with other people in relationships as well. And then we also kind of systemize in our communication as well. So every Sunday, we sit down for an hour, we have a meeting together. And for those of you that know the book traction, we follow the IDS framework. So you know, we literally go through a meeting with an agenda. And we when we communicate, we set rocks with each other, you know, one of my girlfriend's rocks this quarter is to figure out more ways to serve me, which you know, how grateful am I as a man that I have a girlfriend that wants to figure out more ways to serve me. So she literally has an Asana goal inside of Asana where it's like, hey, here's how I can serve Ravi more. So the point of all that being like, if some of you may be listening to this, like, oh my God, this guy's crazy. I can't believe he's has goals in Asana with his girlfriend and meets on a weekly basis. But that that's the, the what you can do if you're instead of chasing five 500 different women and all these different dates, you just get one amazing woman, you eliminate all the decisions. And then now you're getting a higher quality return on your investment because you're investing in that one person. Shifting gears a little bit, another area in my life that I've kind of systemized or eliminated decision making is around how I wake up, what time I go to bed and, and my workout routine. So for me personally, um, I love, I, I know that I, I have an amazing day if I'm able to get up at 530 in the morning. That's like the time that I love to get up and uh, it gives me a few hours before everybody else gets up and kind of gives me an edge on everybody else. So what I used to do previously is I would set an alarm on my phone and then I would, uh, you know, wake up at 530 and then I'd maybe hit the snooze button and I hit snooze and there was really no like system around it. Every time 530 came around, I'd have to make the decision in my mind, do I want to get up today? Maybe I'm not feeling energetic enough. Maybe I should just hit the snooze button. Like all those things would play through my mind. First thing when I woke up in the morning and, I, and, and most of the time I would of course decide, oh, let me just sleep in a little bit. Or I would have forced myself in that decision. Oh, I got to get up and do it. And so what I said to do was, all right, let's, let's systemize and eliminate this decision making. So what did I do? I decided that from today until the rest of my life, I'm going to wake up at 530 in the morning and I'm going to be asleep at nine o'clock at night. So just made that decision. I eliminated all of their decisions around it. There, there was no more like nobody invites me to go out to something at 11 o'clock at night. My girlfriend doesn't even say, hey, do you want to do this thing? If she wants to go do it, she can go do it and she'll sleep in a separate bed so I don't get woken up in the morning. But like she goes and does that thing that's salsa dancing or something at night. But there's just no question. I, I Other than out of 365 days a year, there may be five to 10 days that I don't follow that framework. But every other day I am asleep at nine o'clock, I wake up at 530. So boom, that immediately every day, instead of making that decision, I it's, it's in my calendar actually of what I do. The second part of it is how do I systemize the process? So I make sure that I'm following this framework instead of letting it rely on me. Well, I do a few things, right? So first of all, to go to bed the night before, um, all of my lights in my house go turn red at about eight o'clock. And that that kind of notifies me, it all of the main lights shut off. And then all of my like bedroom lights and stuff like that turn red. And that's a system that notifies me, okay, it's the last hour of the day, let's start winding things down. Uh, my air conditioning unit inside my house, I bought a Nest thermostat starting at about eight o'clock, or I, actually, I think 730, it starts to slowly go from 75 degrees all the way down to 69 degrees. So you know, uh, the lights are getting lower, the rooms getting colder, these are all systems I've set up to kind of push me towards going to bed on time. The other thing that I've done is I had I also removed my TV in my room as well. So I used to have a television in my bedroom. And then I would get in bed and I'd be like, Oh, should I watch a little bit of TV before I go to bed, right? And I was so tired of making the decision. I just I had my house manager come in and remove the TV from my bedroom. And now I don't have a TV. So I don't even have to make the decision anymore. Uh, and then finally, when I go to bed, I usually read the last 20, 30 minutes of the night. And when it's time to go to bed, my, all my lights uh, in my room totally shut off at nine o'clock at night. So I'm not thinking, Oh, maybe I'll, let me finish this last page, you know, let me spend a little four minutes, it's just boom, lights are shut off. And that lets me know, okay, it's time to go to bed, right? So that's how I go to bed. And that's systemized how I wake up every morning is something similar. So first to promote me to wake up on time, I have my air conditioning start warming the house back up an hour before I wake up in the morning. So I don't know about you, but I absolutely hate sleeping uh, in like a warm environment. And so by warming the house up, it makes it 
bit easier when the 5:30 comes for me to get out of bed because i'm not like getting in this warm comfortable like bed and it's cold outside it's like it's warm everywhere i'm hot my natural body is like let's get up and get going the second thing is that um, i used to just like hit an alarm and the room would be so dark and i'd be like oh it's so easy to go back asleep and what i did was i actually saw this from brian johnson he doesn't do it the way that i set it up but i saw the thing from brian johnson uh it's a a sun lamp so people use it in places like chicago or canada or wherever else where there's not a lot of sun all year round and uh it, it mimics the sun and so because i get up at 5 30 there is no sun at that time. And I know that the human's body, it likes to wake up to a sun and it being warm and that promotes, you know, circadian rhythm, et cetera, et cetera. And so what I did was I installed this sun lamp right next to my bed and I connected it to an Amazon Alexa plug. And so then at 5.30 every single morning, boom, it turns on and it's like the sun has hit me in the face. And so if you think about it, at, when 5.30 comes, the house is already like 74, 75 degrees and then I get hit by the sun. Even if I wanted to go back to sleep, I'd have to get up, go turn the light off i'd have to tell the amazon thing to turn the ac back down again and i also have a little ooler underneath my bed which is like a like a chili pad to keep you cool that also shuts off at 5 30 as well so then i'd have to go so if i decided at 5 30 i wanted to sleep in i'd have to get up turn the sun lamp off i'd have to go over turn the ac down i'd have to turn the ooler back on again and by that time you're already up and moving right so all of these decisions have been made for me i eliminated the decision of what time i go to bed and what time i wake up and then i systemized everything around that so that i could make the rest of that process as, as streamlined as possible. And the final example I'll give you of systemizing or eliminating decision making is in the gym, right? So I'm a huge fan of the gym. I've been going to the gym for multiple years, but like everybody else, you know, sometimes I go hard, sometimes I go, I let it up, sometimes I miss maybe miss a day or two or a week or something along those lines. And I very much believe that personal health is like the cornerstone to having an amazing life. I wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that I do, even fly a plane unless I was in really great uh, physical condition. And so so for me, I wanted to systemize and eliminate a lot of the decision making around it. So what's the first big decision you have to make every single time uh, you're thinking about going to the gym? What time do you go to the gym? Same thing with like what time I wake up and what time I go to bed. And so what I started to do is let's just eliminate that. I don't like going to the gym first thing in the morning. I used to be a 430 in the morning guy at the gym every single day. I did that for multiple years. I didn't like it because it would like leave me. Um, I would spend all my creative energy and all my most of my energy in the day working out, which I'm not a professional bodybuilder. So I was like, in my opinion, wasting some of my best energy on the gym and then I would get home and I'd be like sluggish I'd need to take a nap in the middle of the day and then I've also tried to work out at, at nighttime like 5 6 p.m I did that for multiple years as well and while that was great I would kind of f feel myself working all day and I'd hit a slump in the middle of the day and then I'd end up getting distracted and, and finally when it's time to come to the gym I didn't really have a lot of energy to really make it a good workout so for me I decided to eliminate all the decision making process around going to the gym and I just every day from 12 to 2 I go to the gym no question about it seven days a week I've done it now for a year and a half every single day 12 to 2 and when I first made that decision I had a bunch of meetings and and things scheduled in between that 12 and 2 time frame and so I had to move things in my life I had to literally message team members and department heads and and even some of my clients the time that we had some calls with some of my clients I had to move those around so that I could just seven days a week I didn't have to think about it I know that I'm going to the gym from 12 to 2 so that was the first thing I did is I eliminated any decision making around what time I'm going to the gym second thing when you go to the gym you always ask yourself is like all right do I want to do cardio today do I want to do weightlifting lifting today? What do I want to work out when I'm at the gym? Uh, and then once you decide what you want to work out, what specific exercises are you doing? And so once again, all this decision making process and framework that was going in my head, and I was wasting all this valuable energy when I could use that same time thinking about being strategic about how I, I build the rest of my life. So what did I do? I decided, okay, great. I am going to do uh, weightlifting uh, every other day and cardio every other day. So for example, Monday, I do weightlifting, Tuesday, I do cardio, Wednesday, I do weightlifting, Thursday, I do cardio, Friday, I do weightlifting, uh, Saturday, I do cardio, etc. Et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. So I just made it every other day. Boom. Immediately, I don't have to worry because I know cardio is good for you, but I didn't want to spend so much time in the gym. I'm doing cardio and weightlifting every single day. And then the other thing was, what do I do when I'm uh, doing weightlifting or what do I do when I'm doing cardio? So for me, for cardio, every single time, I just get on a Peloton. Uh, I love Peloton. I used to hate cardio and I used to make fun of people that did Pelotons. Then I just did it one day and I fell in love with it. I use the same instructor every single time and I, and I just go on, I choose a random 20 minute class that they have. And then on the weightlifting side, um, I 
follow a very strict routine. I do uh, push one day, pull another day, and legs the, the day after that, and then I, I cycle it. So push is like, you know, your triceps, your chest, your shoulders, and pull is like biceps back, and then legs are obviously your legs. And what do I do inside of each of those? I do the exact same workouts every single time. Literally the exact same. For over two years now, I have done the exact same workout routine. And I know there's gonna be people getting in the comments telling me, you gotta shock the muscle and change it up. And you're probably right. Or quite frankly, I could guarantee you that I would grow more muscle if I ate more money or I ate more money. If I ate more food and I uh, worked out harder and I, I mix it up some, but my I'm not optimizing my life to be this big, massive person. I'm optimizing my life so that I can work out so I aesthetically look good and so that I live longer. And to do that, you don't need this insane, crazy workout routine. And I also didn't want something that was unsustainable that I'm like doing for a little bit and then I get so tired afterwards or I get burnt out from it or something along those lines. So I just wanted something I could do every single time. And the only thing I'll change in there is I will maybe change the rep range or weight range so that there's a little bit of difference inside of it, but everything else is almost the exact same. So maybe it's, I'm a little bit more in maintenance mode personally, but I'll give you a specific example. Um, in April of this year, because I, um, I was kind of falling off my workout routine a little bit, I was uh, 232 pounds and about 16.6% body fat. And I saw myself in a, in a photo and I was like, what, what the heck am I doing right now? Right. And um, ultimately, actually, I think a lot of it had to do with my diet at the time, which that's a separate conversation of how I systemize that. But I ended up deciding, okay, let me just uh, start adding this cardio. I was doing, um, I was doing the workouts before, but I wasn't doing cardio. So I said, okay, let me do cardio and let me add that in. And uh, by the time September came around, I did an in-body scan there. And I, I'm right now I'm 200 and I think 13 pounds and I am 9.2% body fat, right? So I dropped half my body fat and I dropped about 15 pounds and only according to the in-body only lost three pounds of muscle while I was doing that, right? So this workout routine, if if, that, if like you're trying to get in shape or whatever, I'm just saying it may work. I'm, I'm not going to promise you whether it will or not work for you, but that was a beautiful example of me systemizing it. And the other thing is that I know that I loved in my gym, I always loved the days if I would go to the sauna and I would do a cold plunge. So we have a sauna, infrared sauna in our gym, and we have a cold plunge that is um, that is 37 degrees. And I always knew that whenever I had the time and I hit the sauna and the cold plunge, my day would be amazing. The cold plunge would like literally give me a jump start back in my day. And there's a bunch of kind of health things around the sauna and the cold plunge as well. And what did I do? Instead of just like randomly doing this thing that I knew was great for me and I love doing, I baked it in. So that two hour workout window I have from 12 to two, 12 is when I leave my house, two is when I'm back at my house ready to go showered uh, and having my protein shake already. I added in uh, the sauna and the cold plunge. So the first hour I'm stretching and working out. The second hour I go to the sauna for 20 minutes. I do the cold plunge for like three to five minutes. I let my body uh, kind of warm back up again naturally. I uh, drink my protein shake at the gym. I take a shower uh, afterwards and then I'm walking back in the in the house at two o'clock to have my next meeting at two, right? So it's that perfect window. I've eliminated all decision making around it. And I'm about to leave for the gym right now. And I already know exactly what I'm going to do for that. I don't have to make any decisions around it. And the final example I'll give you and thank you for those of you that have I know this is different than a lot of my videos that have stuck around with me until the end. I just kind of wanted to get this out there because people ask me these questions all the time. The final example I'll give you of how I've kind of a systemized or eliminated decision making in my business, we have hundreds of ways, right? Our company is literally called scaling with systems. So we're a huge systems company. Company, everything we do is systemized. But one of the most recent things that I did uh, that blends both elimination and systemization decision making was around our target avatar. So for years, we used to help a lot of different people, really anybody that closed clients through a sales call, we would help build a marketing system for them. And I did that because I was afraid that if I narrowed it down too much that our target market would get too narrow, and we would not be generating enough money, etc, etc, etc. And I knew that the way that we built our marketing systems, we could help anybody that was generating uh, clients through a sales call. And I did that for the longest time, but then there was so much work that was having to be done in the back end. So, you know, they would have to fill out this long application. Our sales coordinator would have to review the application to determine like, okay, is even though they take clients to the sales call, is this system going to work for them? And then the salesperson would have to make the decision on the sales call. They'd have to do a lot of decision making. They weren't really doing a lot of selling. They were just trying to see, is this person the right fit for the system? And then they get inside and then we had to come up with this custom solution because it was different than another client that we had. And so what did I do? I eliminated all that decision making. I said, you know what, we're only going to work with coaches, agencies, uh, and online service providers that have a price point of greater than $2,000 and are generating already over $5,000 a month. By getting that specific, we've eliminated like 95% of the world and we can only work on creating marketing systems and becoming the absolute best at that specific group of people. So immediately overnight, our, our, our curation rate, the people that we decided not to make an offer to went from 50 to 60% down to uh, 10 to 15%, right? So immediately the entire throughput of the whole business 
was so much cleaner and we had so much like decision making process but that wasn't all because i got that specific with it instead of having a sales coordinator be able to have to review every single application and make sure they're the good fit before they get on the call i was paying that person sixty thousand dollars a year instead of having a sales coordinator i built in our own software in-house that could read an application and then uh, read what our avatar sheet is and our scoring system for what makes someone qualified and they could determine just from using an ai algorithm that we built they could determine whether that person what should be on our calendar or not by rating them on one to four one being cancel them immediately two being set them up on a call with an, uh, a setter to pre-qualify them and three and four being they're uh, potentially a really great fit and put them on the call with our salesperson so not only did i eliminate all that decision making process around like who do we help like should we do this blah 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 i was also able to eliminate a sixty thousand dollar a year salary and build a software out that solved that entire process for me and that led to a higher throughput in the end and i changed all my marketing message around it too so all of our marketing messages top of funnel i, I systemized all that so it wasn't like we're trying to catch them when they booked a call we went top of funnel every single marketing message we have now says attention coaches agencies and online service providers so systemized all of that every single message we have everywhere every single step of the process it all says the exact same thing so that when they get to the book a call it's likely the right fit and then they go through that software to see if they're a good fit there and then they get on the sales calendar and so we increased our close rate we increased our cash per close how much money we're making every single time we close a deal uh, we increased our retention our referrals our ascension rate all by making the decision to eliminate all these other people I know we could help simplify our entire sales process and our marketing process as well like I said this is a little bit different video than I typically do if you guys got value out of it you want me to do more kind of rambling videos like that let me know down below